how do we decide on how many model mold pieces and where to build them? We have to imagine that we are taking these model mold pieces off. No part of the model mold can disappear behind the horizon. Rather, no part of the model mold piece can disappear behind the horizon. Usually what I find is that if you have a piece that wouldn't come off if you tried to make it into one piece, which you can tell by looking at your mold and imagining the direction the model mold will need to come off in, splitting it into two pieces will often do the trick. In order to observe if splitting it in two will work, you can stand to the side slightly and imagine the model mold coming off at an oblique angle. Usually I'll just step to the side and imagine the model mold coming off directly towards me. While well, before the model mold would get trapped behind an undercut, we now have a model mold that is going to come right off. The two model mold pieces will need to function as one to support the silicone, of course, and this we are going to accomplish by drilling holes in the wall between the two model mold pieces and bolting the two pieces together. Temporarily, of course, so that when it becomes time to demold our castings, we can unscrew the bolts and separate the model mold into multiple pieces again. Now from the front here, we're running into some serious conundrums. We can't split the model mold in half because we have multiple undercuts happening in different places. We have an undercut right here at the top of the head. And if that was it, we could split the piece into two. That's not the case, however. We have two undercuts per thigh which means splitting the mold down the middle will work for the head, but it's not going to work once we get to the thighs. Splitting it down the middle would also leave us with this little and very awkwardly thin connection that's so thin, it seems to me that it would likely break, or at least it would be more fragile than I would like it to be. So this is not a good idea. The body at the middle is also so broad that it is going to cause another undercut. So the solution here ends up being really complex. We split the head in half, and to avoid the narrow piece, we separate it from the main torso and split that in half as well. That way we avoid the undercuts in the torso. We can include the outside of the left thigh with the left side of the torso. The outside of the right thigh will need a small piece for itself, but the inside of both thighs can be included in the right side of the torso. And this leaves us with five pieces. All of which are rather chunky and with enough length connecting them to another piece so that we can easily run two bolts through each connection. Two bolts connecting two pieces are better than one bolt as one bolt leaves a chance of the two pieces rotating around the anchor point of the bolt. So, two bolts are better. We're always trying to make sure that we can use two bolts. Splitting a mold half into multiple model mold pieces like this does require some experience. My best tip would be to imagine taking the mold apart when figuring out how to split the half. Imagine that each piece is going to be coming off in a particular direction and in a particular order. The order and direction actually matters quite a bit, as you'll see eventually here once we begin demolding. So let's talk about making the clay wall. The clay represents the wall of the model mold piece we are not going to be making, or we are going to be making it later. The clay wall therefore only needs to have one clean side. This is the side we will be making our model mold against. The other side of the clay wall is only there because it has to be. A wall needs two sides. Since we have two sides, I make sure that I create ample support at the back side so that once I start brushing resin up against it, it won't budge or move. It's much easier to create a clean wall if we cut clean slabs of clay from a fresh block of clay. Cutting a clean slab of clay can be done using a simple wire tool. Since we are not after a specific thickness, we don't need any fancy tools or ways to control the thickness of the slab we cut. If we cut one that's really thick, it will simply struggle to bend and conform to the surface of our mold. And if we cut one that's really tall, it's generally going to be really floppy and kind of 
have a hard time standing upright. A wall that's too short is not going to give you enough room to drill holes for bolts or for registration dimples. So somewhere around 6 to 8 centimeters tall is going to be pretty good for this clay wall. A perfectly even height is not needed, but more or less even is always a good idea. A clean wall is really recommended. You have to remember that this clay wall is the negative shape of the moldable piece you are about to make. If it's really messy, it's not going to have an easy time registering to other moldable pieces. A clean wall can be achieved much easier and with a lot less labor by simply cutting a clean piece of clay wall from a fresh block of clay. Try not to make too many marks on the clean side of the wall when attaching it to the sculpture either. If the clay is of the right consistency, then you should be able to hold it without making marks or dimples in the surface. Now if it's too dry, the clay won't stick to the silicone and you'll have a hard time. Too soft and it will be hard to get a clean and smooth finish. Once the wall dries a little bit, you can use your fingers to clean up the surface. Just rub your fingers lightly over any unevenness. If there is a serious bump or there is a joint where two pieces of wall meet, you'll have to get out some sculpting tools and repair it. Running a sculpture tool along the bottom edge where the clay meets the silicone is necessary for a clean and uh, even connection. The registration dimples are drilled at the end by using a big loop tool. And there are some important things to note about these. They do not need to be deep, if they are too deep, two things tend to happen. They might break off simply because they are too deep. Remember that one side of these will be a hole and the other will be a positive shape. If this shape is a long, thin shape fitting into a deep, narrow hole, the outcome is more often than not a disaster. Well, that's maybe exaggerating, but it's not going to be good. There's also demolding to consider. Deep registration dimples leaves you with very little wiggle room when demolding. The moldable pieces can only go one way as long as the dimples are connected. And they can only come apart in this direction, because the registration dimples won't allow anything else. But a broad and shallow dimple gives you enough registration to make sure the pieces are fitting back together as they should, and it is flexible enough to allow us to wiggle the pieces apart should we need to. They are of course also much stronger because they are broad, flat shapes. Remember that we are going to use bolts to hold the moldable pieces together, so we don't need the registration to do anything more than just make sure the pieces fit where they are supposed to. The registration dimples do not offer any structural support. 